So this is a pretty interesting concept from S3, S3 select and Glacier select. So before moving on to this, let's discuss a use case. So as we all know that S3 is used by a huge number of customers and uh, they are used basically to store huge amount of data whose size can range up to five terabytes. And with Amazon S3 Glacier, you can store them in most cost effective way. If in case you want to process a portion of your data from your 10 GB, let's suppose you have stored 10 GB of data, then when you retrieve it, you have to pull all the 10 GB and not just the portion of data that you might want to use. So you have to pull all the 10 GB and not just a portion of it. Remember that. And if someone tells you to do that, your first reaction would be, isn't that going to be too much of complexity and time consuming to process this huge set of data? Yes, of course it will be. And that is where S3 Glacier and Select Glacier comes into our rescue. Okay, so by using S3 Select, it enables applications to retrieve only a subset of data from an object by using simple SQL expressions. And in turn, helps you to retrieve only the data needed for your application. So the major advantage is that with S3 Select, you can achieve drastic performance increases and get as much as 400% improvement and it will reduce querying cost as much as 80%. Okay, so we have the example here, you have the S3 bucket. So before select what used to happen is you have a large set of data and uh, you have to filter them out and you have to send it to the analytics tool that you have to process the information. And this is a very time consuming and it is a very costly operation as well. So what happened after select operation was enabled? So when you have enabled select operation, all the querying actually the SQL expressions have been executed at S3 itself and you have got all the filtered out expressions or the data that you need for your operation. So this is a very fast and cost effective measure. Okay, so with S3 Select, you can do this. So S3 Glacier Select is generally available in all commercial regions that have Glacier. And as similar to S3 Select, Glacier Select allows you to perform filtering directly against a Glacier object using standard SQL statements. But Glacier Select works perfectly for financial services or healthcare, which are mostly historical data. And the process is same. Okay, and Glacier is priced in three dimensions. So one is GB of data scanned. GB of data returned and select queries. Okay, and the pricing of each dimension is determined by the speed at which you want your results returned. This is a very important concept that can come in exam. Okay, they can ask you, like if you are uh, using glaciers, what are the measures that you can have within which amount of time that you can retrieve the data. So if you see here, we have three options. One is expedited. You can get the data within one to five minutes standard which comes like three to five hours and bulk so which is five to twelve hours let's suppose in the exam they ask you like which is the type of glacier we can select or to retrieve the data rapidly so the option will be expedited and if it is within like three to five hours you can tell them as it is standard and if it is more than that you can say it is bulk and s3 glacier select actually works just like any other retrieval job except it has an additional set of parameters you can pass to initiate the job request like the select parameters okay so sometimes in your application or based on your company's policy you might want to prevent objects from deletion for a specific period of time or for an infinite amount of time okay for this kind of situation we use s3 object locking with s3 object lock you can store objects using a write once read many warm model okay so what it means is that with write once read many if you have a data storage device on which information once written cannot be modified. And this is what object locking for S3 is based on. So S3 object lock provides two ways to manage object retention. One is retention period and the other one is legal hold. And uh, a retention period specifies a fixed period of time during which an object remains locked and the legal hold provides the same protection as a retention period but it has no expiration date. So a legal hold is a process that an organization uses to preserve all forms of potentially relevant information when litigation is pending or reasonably anticipated. So legal hold is not anything to do with uh, computation. It is basically the terms that uh, companies use when there is a legal procedure going on and they want to hold on to the data. You cannot do anything about it. No APIs or anything will work when there is a legal hold because that's a company's policy and you cannot delete them. Okay, so let's see the example here or the diagram here to visually see how it works. So you have the S3 bucket 
okay with object lock enabled so you can set a default retention period also that is optional and when you place your objects that you want to lock you can apply a retention period uh, which is basically either a legal hold or both so first when you create the bucket you can have the object locking enabled with a default retention period and you can place the objects that you want or what you can do is you can have an object locking option here as well where you apply a retention period or a legal hold or both okay so this is a pretty simple example of this one and note that object lock works only in version buckets and retention periods and legal holds apply to individual object versions and it doesn't prevent new versions of the object from being created so the main gist of this is information once written cannot be modified okay let's move on so yes s3 allows you to easily deploy and enforce compliance controls for individual s3 glacier vaults with a vault lock policy but before that we need to understand two important concepts what is an archive data in amazon s3 glacier is stored as archives remember that and an archive can be comprised of any data such as photos, videos or documents. And a single archive can be as large as 40 terabytes. And the restriction here is that after an archive is created, it cannot be updated. Okay. The second one that we want to discuss is what is Vault? So Amazon S3 Glacier uses vaults as containers to store archives. You can perform a variety of vault operations such as create a vault, delete a vault, lock vault, list vault metadata, retrieve vault inventory, tag vaults or filtering and configure vault notification as well. So having said that, as I already said, that S3 allows you to easily deploy and enforce a compliance controls for individual S3 Glacier vaults with a vault lock policy. You can specify controls such as write once read many in a vault lock policy as well and lock the policy from further edits or future edits. And you can deploy a variety of compliance control in a vault lock policy using the IAM policy language. But there is a difference here. A vault lock policy is different than a vault access policy. We make use of the vault lock policy to deploy regulatory and compliance controls, whereas we make use of a vault access policy to implement access controls that are not compliance related and which are temporary and subject to frequent modification. But having said that, vault lock and vault access policies can be used together. If the vault lock policy doesn't work as expected, you can abort the lock and restart from the beginning. Okay, let's see the example here. So you have the glacier storage and you attach the vault lock policy to your vault. So what happens here is it will return the lock ID and it will set the lock to in progress state. When it returns the lock ID, it tells you that it will expire in 24 hours. Before that, you have to validate it and if you validate it you can lock the vault else you can start the operation once again so as i already mentioned if the vault lock policy doesn't work as expected you can abort the lock and restart from the beginning okay but remember one thing you have the glacier storage you attach the vault lock policy to the vault that you have created which returns the lock id which sets it to in progress state and returns the lock id and which expires in 24 hours within which you have to validate it and once you have validated it you can lock it else you can start the process once again okay so this is basically all about s3 glacier vault lock okay let's move on oh man that was a really long session and that was too much of information that we had to cover but the thing is if we don't discuss all the important concepts we cannot justify learning itself so i have tried covering as much as possible but if suppose i have missed something please let me know in the comment sections below and I will make sure to be regular with the videos and I promise you I will be. So please support me on this and make sure you have watched all the episodes or all the videos in the S3 section because all of the videos are important for the exam and in general as well. So that's it from my side for today. If you liked the session, please hit the like button, put a comment on what you liked, what you didn't. And we are a small family right now. So please, please, please do subscribe to the channel. So please stay safe, stay healthy and I'll meet you in the next episode of AWS. Until then, it's Pythaholic signing off.